Pennsylvania oh, yeah. is. It's 10 minutes this side of Harrisburg and uh, so it's small, small it. Christian school. It didn't record anything, so. Oh, did it? Well, it was only like five minutes. Oh. I mean, we were talking for a long time, but we only were. recorded five minutes. Hmm? Wait, what? what no, when I, once we started the pod, it was only like five minutes. Oh, later. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. everything we talked about, it's on. No. It, it's recorded. No. Everything. That's why I'm glad I stopped it before we, uh, because I kept getting the right error. I was like, mm, I don't want to go through a whole podcast and have it not recorded. Mm. So, Did your intro come in? No. Oh. So that was a good warm up. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. That's cool. So <laughs> let me think of a new seven. reason why I came here. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we do that. <laughs> See, now that's an intro right here. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I'm Dan the Realtor. Today, we're going to talk about the long-term benefits of home ownership. We're also going to talk about how you can buy a multifamily building with 5% down. We got the DMV Real Estate Report, the Real Estate Hot or Not, then we're going to jump into the comments section. Welcome to the Real Estate Wire, folks. What's going on, everybody? I'm Dan the Realtor. Coach Marcus, what's up, y'all? And today, we got a special guest. We got Valicia, the Real Estate dream catcher. What's going on, Valicia? Hey, woo! Good, how are you? <laughs> I'm gonna put some applause in there for y'all. So for y'all that's just listening, we did like a whole like 10 minutes and we didn't record anything. So tell us a little bit about your business, Felicia. You're DMV, you're Arizona, you all over the country. You 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 you, you dodging the, the winters, <laughs> right? You flying <laughs> south like a bird. What's the JC line? We don't know the Jay-Z line. I don't we gotta You fit. don't know the Jay-Z line. You don't know the Jay-Z line. You're right, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't trying to rap it either. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your business, Felicia. Sure. Let me kind of clean up what he just said. I am a <laughs> snowbird to a degree. <laughs> snowbird, right. <laughs> That's what a term is called. Got it. Um, I service clients in Arizona as well as the DMV. I typically, you know, service relocation clients. That's my niche. Most of the time it's military, but I don't strictly work with military. All price points. I do service as well. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as coast to coast, I definitely just started that as a way to escape the cold. My family's there. That's home for me. So I was able to get my license and help out where I'm needed. And so then you was born in Arizona? I wasn't born there, but I was raised there. I went to school there. I was born in Dallas. Um, but raised there. That's everybody. Where Beyonce there. from? She's from Dallas. She's from Houston. 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 Yeah. That's not. That's different. It's different. Houston. Totally different. That's different than Dallas. Yep. You hear my accent? Don't tell nobody that. Don't say that to Don't nobody. Don't say that. I guess it's like saying Manassas and like. It is not Forestville. the same. That's like saying Baltimore and DMV. I oh, don't say that. Oh, oh I'm really? sorry. Don't say that. Yep. So Baltimore, the, the Baltimore bro, DMV is not and the DMV. Houston and Dallas thing is is similar. No, I'm just saying it's oh. not the same. It's not this. Okay. Y'all Baltimore folks is not DMV. N no, no diss to Houston. I'm just saying it's not the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Baltimore and Houston is a bad comparison. I agree with you. <laughs> Agreed. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into the first real estate topic. Unpacking the long-term benefits of home ownership. Uh, so reading an article from Keeping Current Matters talks about if you're thinking about buying a home soon, Higher mortgage rates and rising prices and ongoing affordability costs uh, concerns may cause you to wonder if buying a home right now still makes sense. Uh, while those factors are important, there's more to consider. Uh, you should think about the long-term benefits of home ownership. Uh, think about this. If you know people who bought a house 5, 10, or even 30 years ago, you're probably going to have a hard time finding someone who regrets their decision. Uh, why is that? Uh, the reason is tied to home values that grow over time. So there's a chart. I'm going to throw it on YouTube. If you're listening on the pod, I'm going to explain it to you. If you look at the percent of change in home prices, you can see that the average home price grew just over 57% nationwide over a five-year period. Now, I think we should also add that two of those years was the, was the pandemic, which we had like ridiculous home price growth. But right. still, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. You're Charles. So if you wait for housing prices to come down, um, <laughs> it's not. And I think the financial part of it is when you ask someone about uh, that's owned their home for a long time and you ask them about like, what was the benefit of you buying a home, you know, in 1993 or, you know, 1983 or whenever they purchased it. 
<clears throat> the first thing that I think that they'll talk about is the stability and them having a place for their family and all the things that happened and the kids were raised and the schools and all. And they'll talk about all the different families they met in the connection. But then quickly after that, they'll probably think about, unless you bring it up, they might say, oh, you know, I did make a lot of money when I sold it to, you know, whatever. And there's so many benefits. I don't know. I, I definitely believe that the benefits outweigh the, the negatives. Um, and I don't see any negative of, of uh, but some people could probably come up with some, but I don't see the negative of, of owning a home. Um, yeah. Especially when I think about those things I just touched on, but also I'm not throwing my money away. In my mind, it's like me throwing my money away or giving it to a yeah. landlord, which is in my mind, throwing my money away. Um, there's a benefit to it. Yeah. But um, I agree. recently I was just thinking about how not only when you sell a home, but also <clears throat> just being able to tap in when it comes to like taking out equity. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times I talk to people who are looking to purchase and they're like, what is equity? Like, what is that? But it's like literally what happens when people think of the American dream, like putting your kids through school, you may not have to sell your house to get that money, but you can tap in, take that money out sure. and invest somewhere else and invest into your kids, invest into another business. Like it's just yep. things that I feel like we have to educate people more about. And that's one of the benefits. You don't have to sell. Keep your yeah. house. Yeah. Stay in it. Pull For the sure. money out. Work it. Do you it. Know, it's a tool. So, Yeah. I mean, I think it also comes down to who you listen to, you know, <laughs> I was, uh, I was talking to, I think I was talking to Nick Bush about, um, you know, build, building our businesses and, you know, we were masterminding um, about, you know, some things we were working on. And um, we realized, like, oh, I had the realization that I built my business up to a particular point, like the pinnacle, like, oh, I want to make this amount of money. You know, I started off as a nurse, right? So I, I worked as a, at a nurse, as a nurse in the hospital for 10 years. I had my LPN. I did psych work. Um, then I did med surge, I did ER, I did traumatic brain, all that stuff. And I was like, okay, well, I'm making, you know, this amount of money and it was dope. But then I was like, I want to make more money. So now I made a plan to make more money. But then I got to that point and I was just kind of like, oh, crap, what's next, right? And one thing I realized was that I had gotten to a point where beyond where my dad had gotten, right? And I was like, oh, okay, I'm dad, where am I be able to make more than my pops did? Like, cool, right? But then I was like, but like, all right, now what? <laughs> right? So I think it's about like who you listen to, who you see uh, in a position where you want to be. Because if you're like, yo, I'm just going to rent because my mama rent, my grandma rent, you know, everybody I know rent. Mm -hmm. I don't want to buy no house. Like my grandma, she she never owned. She, my grandmother literally said, I never bought a house because I didn't want to have no 30 year mortgage. And my grandmother died at 97 years old. Yeah. She could have had three mortgages. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. I just found mm -hmm. out my great aunt, she has lived in her property for it. I mean, as long as I've been alive and just to find out that she's been renting and like they have just recently told her they're going to sell the land. And I'm just like, all this time you've been renting, like yeah. the benefit of owning in itself is just to know, like, now I'm so mad that her land is leaving mm -hmm. and my grandmother's place or great aunt, I call yeah. her grandma, it won't be it's like. It's you got the emotional tie to it. You can go back there and you can remember yourself standing in certain spaces and being in certain places as a little girl, right? Like I, and it and it is heartbreaking in in a sense. And and I um part of when I do my seminars, like I bring up a, a chart, um, and I might send it to you so you can you know post it. But it talks about like if you have a certain amount that you pay each month in rent, and then there's ten years, twenty years, thirty years, you'll see like how much this amount for this amount of years ends up you spending 240,000 or, mm. you know, $720,000 if you rent for 30 years like that, you own that. Like, but, but that's how much you gave to somebody else. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, there's no, there's no, that's why I said, there's no way that, that the benefit of, of uh, uh, renting outweighs the benefit of, of ownership. I feel like right now, though, we have to make it make sense. And I get why people are hesitant because before and when I think my great aunt may have had the opportunity, her price for actually purchasing versus what she paid in rent was probably going to be less. Hmm. Right now, I think a lot of my clients are at a standstill because the price of actually having a mortgage has been more than what it would actually hmm. cost for renting. So they only look at that and they don't necessarily see all of the benefits, mm -hmm. but you have to make it make sense for you. For sure. I mean, and that, that that's a good point. I think one thing we talk about a lot is expectations, mm -hmm. right? And so 
my clients, some of my clients are the same way. Where it's like, oh, well, you know, I want this. And I'm like, well, but you can't afford that. <laughs> right. Here's what you can afford. And so the expectations are, well, you can buy something for more than you're renting, but what is that money, what that money gets you? How realistic are you? And then how how much are we, you know, as a people willing to take a step back for half a second? That part. And mm. I think that's the main point, too, that I have to make to a lot of my clients. Like, focus on the real goal and the mission. If your real and goal, end goal is to be a homeowner because you know the benefits and you know in the end this to be what is going to be, like, something you want to flip or something you want to take equity out of, like, maybe you have to sit back a little bit and take a home that may not have four bedrooms. Maybe you'll take that three bedroom, but you want to be a homeowner because you know the benefits versus right now, four bedrooms, I can't afford them. And I'm going to be house broke or house poor. <laughs> you know, you just really have to hone in on why. And I think sometimes people lose sight of that. So Bruh, I, like, I agree. That's a bar. I think um, like, you know, to personalize it, obviously, but I'm driving, uh, what do I got right now? I got two cars. I got three cars. All of them over 20 years old. I could go out right now and buy, you know, a, 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 a Q8. I could buy Benz, right? Mm -hmm. And look cool, look good. I'd be flossing. I'm little too. I get out yeah. of a big body. People would be like, whoa, right? But I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. Why? Because my long-term plan is to go in there and buy the joint cast. Mm -hmm. I'm not financing anything. I'm going to drop 100 and get it, right? Okay. <clears throat> but people look at me now, you know, they're like, yo, why don't you get your... Why don't you get your wife a car? Well, my wife has a car. She got, we got three cars, right? Well, why don't you get a new car? Well, why, why would I do that? It doesn't make sense for me mm -hmm. right now because my goal is to continue to buy real estate. And I want my DTI to look a certain way. So flossing with cars, you know, I know people that got better cars and they got no real estate. And I'm like, yo, you're, when I really, when we really look at their, like, their, their portfolio, it's like, you got a lot of cars and a lot of notes, but you don't got no real estate in mm -hmm. there. So you're... You're finance like it's backwards. It You're financing a depreciating asset as opposed to financing an appreciating asset. So that's how we move backwards. Mm -hmm. That's that's called hustling backwards when we're we're putting our liabilities before our assets so that we can look good in front of people who we don't even know. Right. I, I heard a um, you know that, that term about the Joneses and keeping up with the Joneses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Joneses yeah. broke. <laughs> <laughs> when the Joneses broke too, they just broke in a different way. Yeah, the Joneses you know, DTI is they, crazy. Yeah, because they're trying to keep up with, you know, uh, the Bezos or, right. or whoever. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, when they think, we're like, oh, I'm still in a deficit. So, and it's crazy. Like, I'm especially doing black folk, we love labels, man. We love we, we love signs and labels. We like, and I like labels too. I like a nice Balenciaga, you know what I'm saying? Don't, I, I like stuff that don't got labels oh, on it, but that's fancy. Amazing. Like a nice polo that nobody knows the polo. I like but, Target. Yeah, and don't oh, get you, it twisted. Yeah. I mean, I'm the real estate dream catcher. So if you want to get your mansion and you're in the position to do that, I'm here for it. Well, yep. that's not yeah, what we're for saying. Sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like, look, <laughs> I think that we got to we got to put the cart before the horse. Right. And that's right. Yeah. We got to put the cart before the horse, which is get your real estate first, because like that, that just makes sense. Mm -hmm. Drive a beater for 10 years. Right. And, and pile up on real estate. So that we can get to the point where we're not dependent on social security, so that we're not dependent on mom and them, so that we're not dependent on, on Medicare and Medicaid. Right. You know, these types of things are long term oh. wealth strategies, right. goals, mm -hmm. not just, oh, it's too expensive right now. I'm going to go ahead and rent because I don't want to have to fix the refrigerator if it breaks. Yeah. And that mentality comes, it ends up here because it's fed from a source that's probably in the same position of just renting. Like, do I'm telling you to do this because this is what I'm doing in a sense. But if you get in a different circle and you hang around homeowners and you hang around and you get fed from people that have a portfolio, then they're starting to talk to you about different things. Mm. And there's a, um, I don't know if y'all heard that story about uh, the guy who was Steve Harvey's son, a friend of Steve Harvey's son. Mm -mm. And he was going to school for um, uh, financial advice, you know, getting into his financial advisor world or whatever. And this young man um, was hanging around his son and he was like, yeah, I'm trying to do this and, you know, whatever. And, and Steve saw the potential in him. And then when he started, like, he graduated and he got his certifications and all the things, Steve said, all right, I'm going to give you a shot. And he gave him a shot and he ended up turning a, like, $500,000 investment 
into a cup like a couple billion dollar investment for for Steve or, or, or hundreds of million dollars. It was it was some stupid it was some some stupid number, but it was the thing was had he hung, been hanging around a different circle, he never would have gotten that opportunity to not only take care of one of the most famous men in in the world, but also this young man got an experience of a lifetime that he can actually talk and pour that into other young on um, other young men. And uh, I just think you know who you're around if they pour the right things right, into same. you, yeah. You'll, you'll be able to like grow and then you grow so that you can help somebody else grow. Yeah, definitely passion, passionate about that mindset piece because mm -hmm. that's, like you said, it comes from somewhere. And a lot of people I know just think about it, just as you said, renting has been all they know. Mm -hmm. And all they do is look at the, the numbers for what it is versus mortgage. But yeah. I like that a lot. Mindset matters. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, renting is great. Yeah. If you're a landlord, here it comes. Yeah. Speaking of landlords, <laughs> let's talk about how you can buy a multifamily building. Did you like that segue, bro? I knew it was coming. That's right. Better and better yeah, and better, I, bro. It was, it was a good one though. With five percent down, what you got for us in the coach's corner, coach? Yes, sir. Um, so as a homeowner, potential homeowner, you can buy what we call a multifamily property, which has more than one unit, one door, uh, one one uh utility meter, right? So four units, you can buy up to four units and put down three and a half percent through an FHA loan. But that means you have to live in one of the units and you can rent out the other three. OK, um, FHA right now is the only lending vehicle that allows you to do that with only three and a half percent down. Conventional loans, which are backed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, currently require anywhere from 15 to 25 percent if you want to get up to like a four unit property. Most people don't have that 15 to 25 percent, especially a first time buyer. So conventional loans have a great advantage sometimes, um, you know, credit scores and, and mortgage insurance and things like that. As of November 18th, conventional is saying, OK, we don't require 15 or 25 percent any longer. We're going to allow you to put down 5 percent. So FHA is an option with three and a half percent down. Occupy one unit, rent out the other three. November 18th, conventional says put down 5 percent, occupy one unit we're not the other three and then you can develop a real estate portfolio. So now those three other people can essentially pay the mortgage on the entire building. Should you rent it out the proper way? This is the introductory step into what we call house hacking. So you can go from the four unit, then the three unit, then the two unit, and then the one unit. And after let's say eight to 10 years, you end up with 10 doors, own a single family home and everybody, all of your other renters essentially are paying for your buildings and your single family home. If, I mean, you can you also do right four, 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 four. Like you can just keep going, right? You can buy four units and up to another four units and up to another you, four units. You could, right? But another quick story is I got a client that, well, some I've had some people that have tried to do that and it's it sometimes can end up being being like mortgage fraud because you're really not, you're just mm -hmm. working the you have to live in one? Yeah. Okay. This program live is, in one? Right there, you go. That, 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 that those air quotes get you get you in trouble sometimes. The car was made by Valicia. Or hers and hers alone. But you got you got legitimately show that you are like living in the property. But I was talking to uh, King James. He was like, "Yo, all you gotta do is well, maybe I shouldn't say that. I'm not gonna drop that one on y'all. Send me a direct message, and I'll tell you the hack for that one." But if you're living in, let me ask you this: If you're living, you're doing a because this is what I did to, to get my first building. I did owner occupy. And those tenants are still there today, and they pay my mortgage. Um, and the building just cash flows. I go there once. I, I, I go there once or twice a month. I got cameras in the joint. You know what I'm saying? So it's it works. It's mm -hmm. dope. It's what you probably want to do if you're trying to build up a real estate portfolio. Yeah. So you saying that if I do four, then I go into another four owner occupy the other four. I can't. You can't do four and then do another four. I mean, you can. You can, but you, you just have to rest it. <laughs> Is there a timeline? Maybe? You just got to make it make sense. So, yeah. So, right. You have to make it make sense. Right. Mm -hmm. But like, realistically, think about it. If I'm saying, okay, I'm going to buy a four unit property and I'm going to live in one. And then in t 14 months, minimum, let's say 12 months, but let's say 14, 16, 18 months, whatever, you buy another four unit building mm -hmm. and I'm going to live in that property. Yeah. Okay. Like it makes sense. And if you're able to prove it and you're adhering to the guidelines, but not and like, it works. after one month, I'm going to go live Absolutely in this not. building <laughs> instead. Because what you just did is put yourself in a position where you could go to yeah, jail. you got to have some delayed gratification. I mean, I lived in mine for like a year-ish. Yeah. yeah, so. 
Don't look at me. Yeah. I lived in mine for a year. I, I, lived, I lived in my prop investment property as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, what you, you should do. Yeah. You buy it, occupy, then after a while, rent it, and then move on. Lovely. And that's powerful, bro. So let's say, for example, let's use some, some numbers for the people in the cheap seats. Let's say 700000 right? Average apartment builder here in D.C. You ain't getting nothing less than 700 That's decent for a four-unit building. Okay. Times five. I'm just using easy math. Thirty-five thousand. Thirty-five thousand. Closing costs. Another four. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thirty-five. What's that? Fifty thousand that you got to come up with. You can get closing cost credit from the from the from the seller. Seller. So let's go back to thirty-five thousand. So you can get a thirty. You can get a seven hundred thousand dollar building for thirty-five thousand dollars. How much would one of those units probably rent for? Let's call it. Let's let's go on the low side. Let's say. Eighteen hundred. Let's call it two. Let's say seventeen forty nine. That's what mine ran for. Seventeen forty nine. Eighteen fifty two with no utilities. Seventeen forty nine. But it depends on the neighborhood. Okay, so let's just let's just call it seventeen hundred. Right. So okay. Some more so time. times four. What's that? Forty five something. Thirty four and thirty four is uh sixty eight. Sixty eight. And your mortgage is gonna be what? About five, well. Well, seven hundred thousand. It's it's somewhere in that range. It's close. So you're gonna be cash flowing what like. Two thousand dollars a month. But the thing is, if you live in one, though, you got to live in one. Right. So what you're saying is, when you got to take away, uh, so let's say two times, let's say two thousand, just for easy math, because you can rent each. Because I know in certain areas in DC, you can the the the, the rent for two bedroom. You want to get a two bedroom. You need to get a two bed. If you got it, if you got a choice between a one bedroom and a two bedroom, cool. get you a two bedroom because people can can pile up. You don't really want to do three bedrooms. Cause then you just get a bunch of kids and then they just tear your property. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm fair telling, housing. Th- yeah, fair housing, sure. <laughs> um, I, I'm just giving you advice from from the Dan police, to you. The police pulled you over. <laughs> yeah, look, from Dan to you, if you have the choice, you want to you want to focus on two two bedrooms because that's going to be ideal. Uh, three, four bedrooms, you're probably going to get destroyed. Um, one bedrooms, you're going to get a bunch of like people that's just in and out more. Uh, more vacancies. You don't want to worry about. You don't want to be focused on vacancies too much. Two bedrooms is a sweet spot. Let's say two thousand dollars a month. Okay. Two times three is six thousand. Your mortgage is going to be how much? Let's say your mortgage is sixty five hundred. <clears throat> so you're going to cash flow five hundred while you're living in it. But remember, you're not paying any mortgage because the rent from the other and three is going to pay And this is a long term investment. And you're still going to have the building. Yeah. And it's going to go up in value. And and say as everyone says, they're waiting to refinance. Say that happens. That, yeah. Then you drop your rate down from. Whatever it is to whatever it'll be. Look at the end so, goal. Yep. Yep. So at least it's paying for itself, mm-hmm. and you have an investment property that hopefully is going to continue to build equity. Like you really just have to look at the end goal. Yeah, and I've had some people. I've had this this conversation over the past couple of weeks. Now I really had to kind of not shift my thinking, but shift my approach to the conversation because um, I understand there are a lot of people who are interest rate driven that they lock in on that rate. And I say, look at the payment, right? So the payment is is okay, but then here's the thing: as an investor, you if you if you end up with a six percent interest rate versus an eight percent interest rate, you're paying more interest throughout the year, right? At the end of every year, you're getting a ten ninety eight. So as an investor, wise investors mm-hmm. don't really think about the interest rate. The ones that I know, they look at. Like, what is my profit? What is my what do my margins look like? Like, what what am I saving? That type of thing. But at the end of the year, you get a 1098. So if you a 1098 with 6% is going to be lower than a 1098 with 8%. What's a 1098 for the people in the 1098 GT? is the interest, the statement you get from the lender every year that says how much interest you paid. And you can take that that document and send it in when you file your taxes, it reduces your tax amount. Am I getting a 1098? Are you? Yeah. You should. Yeah, yeah, you, you, own, yeah, yeah, you, own, you, you pay a mortgage. Interest, yeah, you pay a mortgage. mortgage interest. Okay. Yeah. I probably but do. I just send it to my bookie. Outside <laughs> of just writing off the, the yeah. interest, um, where else are you going to live in DC rent free? Like basically, you're living rent free if yeah. you're making the extra five hundred, which may not seem like a lot, but you mm-hmm. also are not paying rent, so you're saving on that. Yeah. It's like okay, where else is your landlord going to let you live rent free? No, <laughs> for a little not while. A bit. Then <laughs> the sheriff gonna come and kill you out. <laughs> yeah, so you gotta flip the script, man. Yeah. I mean, if you you know, renting is is cool only when you're receiving rent. Paying rent, you know. Mm-hmm. If you're listening to this podcast, you sh- you you already hit. So yeah, let's get into the DMV real estate report market 
Report. Mm-hmm. I change the name of it every time. Every single sometimes week. Sometimes it's DMV Real Estate Report. Sometimes it's DMV Market Report. Sometimes it's the Market Area DMV Report. Sometimes. So today is going to be the Greater DC Area Market Report. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. So the September numbers are out, actually. Um, so if you've been following us, ooh, oh man, we just went off a cliff, bro. All right, <laughs> that's good to know. So prices looks like the average uh, median sold price went down five point one percent from August to uh, September. It went down five percent. Went down five percent. It went up four percent from this time last year. So one thing to consider if you're waiting year over year. You're probably losing money if you're waiting month over month you could be getting a deal now here's why i think that is in my opinion uh the quote that we always say right buyers think it's 2008 Um, sellers think it's 2021 mm -hmm. so i know right now i've got about 10 overpriced listings right now or about five some of them under contract but i've got a bunch of overpriced listings right now Mm -hmm. yeah and that's because my clients are like well this is what i want for it and i'm like well, that's not gonna sell for that, right? We're both making this weird voice at the at the, at the listing appointment. It's kind of weird, but anyway, uh, yeah. And they want these exorbitant prices, um, and they we're seeing the extended days on market. And I think at a certain point, people are gonna be like, okay, let me just drop this price so I can get this Drake on. Right. Mm-hmm. So new listings are down, um, two point one percent from this time last month. We're down eight percent on new pending. So new pendings are people who put their property under contract. Uh, we're down 8.7% from this time last month, down 15% from this time last year. Closed sales also down 17% and 20% from this time last year. And then the median sold price, which is what everybody's more interested in, the median sold price is down from this time last uh, month. The 5%. 5.1%, and it's still up from this time last year. So the price went up. Four percent from this time last year. So price is still going up year over year, and month over month, it's going down, which I think is kind of seasonal. It, it tends to happen around school when school starts. When school starts, people come off their vacations um, towards like this. You no, know, so we'll see if this is bas- basically getting back to normal because this is kind of like how it used to be. You yeah, what's normal now? We, we're still trying to figure out our new Y'all realtors create the normal. I, I have this. Why are you always saying y'all realtors? Because I'm always, targeted, in, I'm always in I'm always right? Okay. I mean, <laughs> we holler. create it, but we also, <laughs> like Dan said, we have clients. They are they are the ones that are not movable at times. Yeah. They want what they Same. want. Same but, but I wanted to know, though, at that 5%, um, what is it now? What's the actual number so they can know? Uh, so last month, it was 550000 This Five. month, it's 522000 median sold price. So it's down to 5%, so 30000 almost 30, uh, Yeah, 30000 30, Okay. Home sitting on the, on the market a little bit longer, or people just want to hurry up and get aggressive and get rid of the property, so they drop the price you know, in that negotiation. I get it. And now October's numbers might look the same because of where the rates have gone. So we'll see. We'll see next month what October looked like. Yeah. I mean, I think I think um, I think it's a good thing. You know, listings prices have just been like kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see how it continues. Now, if we continue to go down, I think this is what I think is going to happen because the, the chart, I'll put it up for uh, everybody watching on the YouTube. Make sure to like, subscribe and share. Uh, put a comment down there and uh, hit the notifications button so that you're the first to know when we drop new content. Chart kind of goes like this, right? Mm-hmm. Which every chart in real estate kind of goes like this from 1986 <laughs> on up, right? Um, but overall, year over year, the prices are going up. Month over month, the prices are going down. Um, and so the I think what we should take away from this is get in where you fit in. Yeah. Uh, buy what you can afford. Um, sure. Don't chase the interest rates. Don't chase prices. Create a plan and then stick to your plan. Yep. Make sure your team is tight. Got a good said realtor. What do you say? I couldn't have said it better. Yeah. That's that's what I have to continue to tell my clients. Make sure your team is tight. Make sure you're educated. Make sure you're comfortable. Make wise decisions. Don't keep up with the Joneses. So, what's one of the main conversations you, you have in Valicia with your peoples? Buy what you can afford. 
like I tell people now, don't take for granted that you're in a position right now to get a Mm pre-approval because that may not come again. You may not have that job, but I'll tell you what, when people were getting laid off during COVID, but they were owners, they were able to file hardships and not pay mortgages. Like those benefits were unheard of and definitely something to take advantage of, which your landlord didn't care though. You still have to pay that rent. But if you were owner during that time and you experienced hardship, you were able to get some, you know, type of, they'll put it on the mortgage later or you don't have to delay payments, whatever the case is. But um, I just tell them, if you have the pre-approval, act on it. Of -hmm. course, it may not be the dream home yet, but it may be something that you're able to actually make yours, make it comfortable, make it beautified. It may not have the six bedrooms. It may have the three based off of where we are. Mm -hmm. But I definitely just tell my clients exactly what we've been speaking about. Be realistic and stick to the goal. It's possible now. Yeah, it is. Get what's within your means. Just don't go crazy. I foreclosed before back in 2008. So I know. I tell people. you had a foreclosure? Yeah. I tell people, like, I'm not just trying to push you to buy to buy. I'm not that realtor. Mm -hmm. I literally see the benefits in it, and I want you to be comfortable at the same time and know that, like, I've been there, and I never want to put someone in a position to feel like they're in something they can't afford. But that's where it comes back down to being realistic and and buying something that's affordable when you can. Mm -hmm. But always, when if you have a pre-approval, do it now. Yeah. Doing it's it. good. It's really good. So, let's get into the real estate hot or not. Okay. <laughs> Why do I think that's so? I don't know. <laughs> we <laughs> came up with this because you talked about you asked us earlier on the first again. recording. <laughs> yeah, the one that you guys that didn't actually on the A side. On the A side. <laughs> so we started. So this is how we started. So we started it. We with uh we started it with the. <laughs> what happened? We that? started. I don't know why they come out. Uh, so we used to just talk on the phone. We was doing deals. Talking on the phone, lunching, laughing, just joning, or whatever. And then we was like, yo, we should like record this because this is kind of fun. Or maybe to us it was funny. Um, anyway. It was funny. I don't care what y'all It was it funny. Was, it, was, it, was, it, was it was funny. It was funny. Bars. <laughs> bars. We was dropping bars. And then, yeah, we just started recording the joint. Then we did one pilot episode that nobody will ever see. I'm going to drop the pilot episode. Once we get to 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> drop the pilot. You might not ever see the light of day. <laughs> No, we're going to get 100,000 subscribers. Building as we fly. We yeah, trust stuff. me. We're going to get 100,000. Easy. Um, then once we get 100,000, I'm going to drop the pilot pod. Okay. It was <laughs> it was rough and dirty. It was. Us, but we, yeah. we had uh, uh, lapel mics. and yeah, lapels. It was... Uh, it, it just was... It was just different. It and was uh, dry. But we were... We came together on the phone concerning like real estate deals. And, and, the, and then we were kind of arguing about who... You, can you guess that me and Dan go back and forth arguing? Sometimes? Yeah, I mean the whole time. No, we yeah, don't. we've been we've the been doing time. that. For, we've been doing that since the beginning, we right? Don't. Yeah. But What's the beginning? How long? Some three uh, a year, bro. No, we're no, we've do been doing we've been doing this a year. But yeah, how long? Oh. We met three Maybe years ago, mean, four years ago. Oh yeah. Do you remember where we met, Marcus? I meant the podcast. I know, but I'm asking him. <laughs> I'm trying to see. So this is how this is how the bets end we, up. Did, we're gonna do we're gonna do push ups. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, he lost that one. Um, how 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 are we? But he was the you he was the remember. buyer's agent on a deal, and um, uh, and and the deal didn't go through the lady, whatever. But um, it was just, it was just it was just a cool interaction. I just kept following up, yeah, kept following up, and like and just talking to him. And one day I saw he I found him on, on Instagram, and um, he was he was out at at the range like close to my house, and I was like, oh you. You get down. He was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Oh, we need to connect." So I knew I had some common ground. Mm-hmm. Not only we still ain't gone to the range yet, bro. We still have it. Um, <laughs> I'll be and they shut the, and they shut that range down too. Oh, AV? Yeah, because uh, I thought they just opened it. Opened Prince, it Prince, Prince, Prince William County um, oh, Police crazy. bought it and made it the training facility. <laughs> but we just, we just, it just he was a good dude, and I was like, "Oh, let me, let me see what's up." And then we just continued to do deals, and you know, I worked with a lot of his people from church and. Yeah. and mm-hmm. And he was married, and I was like, "Okay, you married?" Because I don't, I only mess with married men. I'm like, "All right, you married? You got family? I right, uh-huh. do this because I ain't trying to be in no trouble. You married? Solid. Take care of your kids. I right. good enough for yeah. me. That's like three check boxes for friendship for me. You yeah. married? You take care of your kids. You you solid? I right, bet. Like, 
So let's just minute, yeah, just minute. And then you just said, okay, we're going to talk because we like to talk to each other. So let's make a podcast. Yeah, because I mean, I don't know if you know this or not, but I like to talk a lot. So um, I did. And I know you were talking about your <laughs> scholastic uh, your scholastic aptitudes. <laughs> I also dropped out of college and didn't do that good at high school, mainly because I used to just sit around and talk all day and everybody was like, you can't talk to me. I'm like, why can't we talk? I got a mouth. Why can't help? You, you can't tell me I can't talk. You were talking while the professor was trying to talk. Well, I was talking with the professor. Oh, they yeah, just yeah. didn't that want to talk that's back like, to work. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's have they a want you to listen. Well, the thing that I learned later in life is I learned best uh, through conversation, like talking about the topic. The educational system only teaches one way, which is just rote. Like you just actually like be a robot and just repeat back what I say. Like take this. It's more about taking a test. Mm -hmm. And all our school systems are performance based, test based. So they're just teaching you for the test so that their schools can get funding and they can keep their jobs. They don't really care if you learn it or not. Right. There's other ways. A lot of people don't really learn that way. Some people like me, I need to learn having a conversation about the topic. Some people need can just read it. Some people need to need to write it down a lot. Like there's different ways that people learn. You have there's different types of intelligence. There's social intelligence, interpersonal intelligence. There's tactical intelligence. Some people need to like actually like mechanics stuff like that. That's, they need to pick. They learn best, stuff, right? Yeah. Schools only teach one way. So when you don't fit into that mold, they label you. They say you're a bad kid, or you're talkative, or you're disruptive. Especially for for black men, right? They're like, oh, you're disruptive, or you need to get out. It's just like. Right, right. So, are you telling me that are you tell us like that they labeled you? Well, they label they label, well they, they started labeling very early, right? Mm -hmm. All the girls were labeled talented and gifted because women tend to be more so more more. Uh, they'll sit down and their handwriting's nice, and they'll be mm -hmm. quiet and they'll listen. Where the dudes, <laughs> we're like, well, because boys are just active. Like we want to run, we want to fight, we want to play. So. Let's figure out a way to teach young boys where they can fight and run around and still learn and not be labeled as hyperactive, ADHD. Then they try to give them drugs, right? And it's just like, and then everybody, all the other people who are just sitting down quiet and writing, then they're labeled talented and gifted. So from elementary school all the way up to junior high school and high school, they put you on this track and they call you talented and gifted. Well, if you grow up your whole life being called talented and gifted, you're going to believe that. And if you grew up your whole life thinking that you're the bad hyperactive kid, you're going to believe that. And so that's how they start. They mm -hmm. put you on these tracks like early on. Mm -hmm. He is smarter than he looks. Like I was he said bringing it. Yeah. Like he said the first time. What are you going to say? He is bringing it back to track to <laughs> the reason that he started this podcast was because this is his form of learning. He thinks best to be able to educate clients and those who want to know about real estate. That's what I got from it, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's fun, you know? It's, it's fun. It's his way. Mm -hmm. It inspired him based off of how he learned. So I like that. And I get to meet people that. and talk to Like, how many people we've met? Like, just... Tons. Right? Tons. You know, we, and it, it, you know, we get to... So, especially when, you know, smoking cigars or, or not, or just drinking, you know, and just having, having a conversation, talking about what we know and then sharing it with people. Yeah. He was like, right? that would be dope. It's dope, man. And, 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 making, it, people, and making it make sense. Like... Easy. We're, not, we're not talking above people's heads. Like, we don't talk about people's heads, man. We just like break it down, you know, in a in a way for people in the cheap seats. The reason I always talk about people in the cheap seats because I'm in the cheap seats. So Marcus will be saying, I'm like, wait, what's that? All right. Because I'm like, break I want to know. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you have a question, probably 10,000 other people got the same question. Mm -hmm. And so it's always good to ask questions. If you got questions, Make sure to put your questions in the comment section below. <laughs> he's working he work on those segues. He does. He does good. Yes. What's going on with the real estate hot or not, Coach? All right. Um, a few would you rather. You know that game, would you rather? Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. You know the hot or not or one, one got to go? Okay. All right. Yep. Um, would you rather be locked for a week in a room that's overly bright or a room that's totally dark? Dang. <laughs> <clears throat> you mean like blackout dark? Like you or like pitch this? black dark or overly bright? I guess I'll take the dark room. I'm taking the dark room Me as too. well. Me too, because I can't. Mm -mm. I'm looking at that light and I'm just already like, mm -mm, no, here's the give thing, me the dark. Too bright of a light, you're going to close your eyes anyway. You can't, like, it's just, just going to have this. Orange, whatever, like from the light coming through your eyes. When you close your eyes, what do you see? Is it? Oh is my it, god! What do you see? Go. I ain't, uh, I'm not going. Is it with you. No, I want to know. Is it black? Because when I close my eyes, it's brown. It, it depends on the exterior light. Because mm -hmm. I see red right now. Red? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see? What do you see, Marcus? 
It's kind of brownish red when you close your eyes. Every time, like no matter where how I am, much light. it's always brown. Like even if it's like bright outside or dark outside, I always see brown. Okay. You, you, you got brown eyelids. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. This question. All right. <laughs> would you? <laughs> Would you rather have to hunt and gather all of your food or eat McDonald's for every meal? I would have to hunt and gather because I don't like eating the same thing over and over. I might have to, yeah, I'm going to stick to that. Hunt and gather. a better hunter. Okay. I think I got to hunt, man. Too much McDonald's break me out. That's not good, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go with the... Keep my, my brand, you feel me? I'll go with the hunt and gather. We need some opposing views. Mm-hmm. Would you, would you? <laughs> well, I'll say McDonald's because I can get the number one. I can get the Big Mac. You know what I'm they got that number four B with the, with the spicy sauce, the little chicken sandwich. I'll be eating it. Got the pickles on. Oh would you rather have for, fortune <laughs> or fame? They say fortune and fame, but would you rather have fortune or fame? These are, I like the first question. I'm going to go with fortune. You know, the ironic thing I'm doing in the pocket, but I really want to be anonymous. Like, like can Fame make me fortune? It if can. you only have both, I mean, you could be famous and broke, right? Because. Yeah. Honey Boo Boo, she famous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to stick to my answer, fortune. Well, yeah, I, take, I take fortune and get out the way. Get out the way, man. Like, don't. Yeah. I, I would. In the spirit of the NFL season and all of the conversation about this team and this guy. The question is, would you rather celebrate the 4th of July with Taylor Swift oh gosh. and probably Travis Kelsey <laughs> or Christmas with Mariah Carey? <laughs> <laughs> Do you make these questions up? No, I, no I don't. I don't. This ain't me because I would never... I don't care about either one of them, okay. but <laughs> I love the holidays, but not. What you doing, Dreams? I mean, it's a, such a tough question. Are you a Swifty? I am not a Swifty. What do they call me, Swifties? I'm really like a fan of no one. Um, I love music, but I can't necessarily say I'm a, a true fanatic of anyone. I cannot okay. name one Taylor Swift song. Me either. If you, I couldn't name it either, but if you played it, I probably have heard it. Know. Oh, I may have heard it. Yeah, and didn't yeah. know I heard who it was. Yeah, like at a mall or like a Target. But Mariah, <laughs> sometimes it's yeah. like I can't have too much of Mariah either. Yeah. She be hitting them high notes. I'll be like, come on, man, like let that. She go. can't hit them no more though. Yeah, she can't hit the so high maybe notes. I'll take no. Mariah because if she can't hit them no more, I'm spending Christmas with her. I don't want them to sing. I don't want that. like they both stink. I'll take Mariah though, <laughs> just because I feel like she would be entertaining. Cause she's so uh, she's such a bougie diva that that would be fun for I just, me. That, Taylor, that would, yeah, just to that like get on my nerves, bro. I, I would don't. probably just cut Taylor Swift's bangs in her sleep, and so I can't be around her for she Thanksgiving. Oh. She always wears those little. Bit, never mind. It's a it's a female thing. Never mind. Let's keep it. <laughs> I, I, I'd hang out at the Fourth of July with my wife likes Taylor Swift, but uh, cause Mariah, I can't do it. Good. Uh. Uh-uh. Um. All right. Now one got to go forever. This is the last one. When did you learn Mariah Carey was black? When she first came out. How old were you? Wait, how did, what? I was in high school. Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know she was black until like. But she's mixed. So. What, what do you mean? What did you think she was? I thought she was white. Oh, straight white? Yeah, I thought she was like straight white. Okay. When I first saw her and listened to her, I was like, oh, I, 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 thought, I, I thought she might have been white, but. She did something with Boys and Men, right? That Boys and Men joint? That was like her second or third album. I think yeah. that's when I found out she Once was black. Day. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, was, late. I'm late to the sauce. If you listen to Bob, I, I grew up very religious, so I didn't listen to none of the music. And then I was like, I mean, I didn't either, but I didn't think you she knew she was, was black. White. I knew she was mixed. You knew she was mixed? Nah. Nah, <laughs> Definitely knew she was white, but I knew she was mixed. Yeah, I'm, I'm late to the game. One got to go pancakes, <laughs> waffles, French toast, or cinnamon rolls. <clears throat> You mean like breakfast cinnamon rolls? Like the ones that come in the little drink when you pop? Hey, it's the waffles. Let's say or ho- like homemade cinnamon rolls. Like, like Cinnabon? Yeah, like homemade. Yeah, Like, like Cinnabon specific. Like, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh my God, any, I'm any getting rid of, of French roll. toast because it's so difficult. I'm getting rid of French toast. Okay. I love pancakes. You don't make French toast good? I love pancakes. I love waffles. Waffles are pancakes though. 
Yeah, that's why I love both. It's just a shape. Yeah, I love waffles. I love pancakes. Do you toast your French toast bread before yes. you toast it? No, I mean, huh? I don't make it. It's not like that's why I got rid of it. Toast mm -hmm. the French toast bread before yeah, you, you toast make... the bread before you make it? You, before you dip it in the egg and the batter? I, I've never done that. That's the key. You got to toast it. That's why they call it French toast. Uh -huh. You toast it. You take the toast. <laughs> yeah, the, you toast the bread first. Is that why they call it French toast? That I mean, is not I would why. Assume, I don't know, but I, I would assume it's, because it's you're... It's because it's toast and they yeah, but it's just bread. If you, it's just French bread, you have to toast it. So you put it but in the toaster, it. and then you take the toast, and then you dip, dip the toast in the batter, and you fry it. And it's way better. Yeah, it's way better, bro. I'm going to try that. It's way better. Because you know if you just dip the bread in the batter, it's soggy. You, bread, it's, soggy. It. it's disgusting. But then you put, but then you dip it in the egg and whatever mixture, and then you put it in the pan. And yeah, then, it's still soggy. Well, I'm kicking French toast off anyway, but we can talk about it. Uh, I'll, get rid of this, I'll get rid of the waffles because they're basically pancakes. I could just cut my pancake up. And Belgian spread. waffles banging though. Belgian waffles are banging. But you didn't say Belgian waffles. You just said, you waffles. said waffles. But it's still a waffle. I'm thinking like you, Eggo. This picture yeah. is a Belgian no, waffle. No, you chose. It's a picture of a Belgian And, and, the, and it's, it's perfect. It's perfectly, perfectly drizzled. No going yeah. back. I don't care about cinnamon buns anyway. <clears throat> so. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Hit her with the question and see what she got to say. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, no, that was it. No, no. Comment section. Oh, okay. So, oh, see, I got to do the transition. Okay. So let's be. <laughs> <laughs> one of our, uh, one of our, our slogans here at the Real Estate Wire is "We build as we fly." So we've been building as we fly. We've been, we've been cruising at the altitude. Let's get to the comment section. Uh, one of the comments that I got. Funny enough, the, uh, the coach's corner ties right into this comment. So this is a comment that I got off the ticket talking uh, from this gentleman. This human's name is E. <clears throat> so E says, uh, this is a regarding, I think I was talking about uh, multifamily and how to buy multifamily. So it's funny that you're talking about. So Mr. E, or e says, people pay for rent as you commercialize and hoard it. There is no value you add to that transaction beyond providing access to something that you hoard. And I'm gonna add like a, what? Z formation snap on that one with like some angry eyes emojis on that. I'm so confused of, what, of, of what's. So basically he's saying that all landlords are jerks and we hoard properties. We don't provide any value. Uh, and we're just hoarding uh, real estate and people shouldn't be, you shouldn't be charging people rent to live in your, your apartment building. Call me, get pre-approved, go buy a house then. You're hoarding real estate? I'd rather be a hoarder of real estate than anything else. Call it what it is. Okay. I, I, a little confused by the question, but cool. Comment. Yeah, they, that's that's his comment. Mm -hmm. He thinks that uh, landlords are... He, it was more, actually, uh, that he was saying. Um, he said, you are a net negative to society, mm -hmm. hurting those in your community. He's talking you to are, you directly, Dan. You <laughs> are disappointing. <laughs> you are di he's, well, he's, he's, he's talking to he's all... mad at you. Yeah, maybe. He don't know me. I mean, he can come find me. He's, he's, to he's talking to all... Basically, all landlords. He's saying this about landlords. They talk. Yeah, he may be talking to me, but he doesn't really know me. So why are you renting, he's, honey? He's squaring up ver ver I mean, he uh, sounds like a on. renter. So, so I'm stop. A, yeah, I'm assuming he's renting. Uh, let me continue. So he says, you're hurting those in your community. Damn. You're disappoint you, you are disappointing people. You should be helping people. Dan, you should be hurt helping people. <laughs> yeah, I'm hurting people. He said, uh, what else did he say? Uh, this is personal. Oh, he said, boy, he man. said, Tell, your, tell yourself that at the end of the day, but you provide no value to to the underlying commodity. You provide no access to things that you hoard. Uh, what else did he say? No this access. is one of his tenants. Yeah, it's one of my tenants. Right? <laughs> it has to be his personal. Paying my mortgage. <laughs> he said, bro, look at yourself. You can't even give a good retort. You're, you're, you have a non-intersectional econ 101 POV. And then I said, "Don't threaten me with a good time." <laughs> See, he's mad. Yeah, he didn't like he didn't like what you said. Whatever your initial video was about, he commented. He didn't like your response, and then he started going personal. So yeah, it sounds that, like a lot of back and forth. That's why that's why a coach don't get on. I I, I can't. I, I leave it to him. I don't get on there and talk about like you want to argue. You but be, I mean, I think yeah. Okay. 
I guess you'd have to see the whole context because yeah. ah, it's over my head. Yeah, basically the context is landlords are evil in his eyes. Are you evil landlord? I am are you evil. not? I am are evil. you not providing any benefit to your? I, I, they tenants? don't have. They don't have a place. Let's to talk stay. about that. They don't have landlords. Water. Not only do you need to buy properties, but you should actually provide benefits to your tenants. Make sure that the environment is going to be an environment that they're happy in, because they're paying your mortgage. Do do do. Bars. That's a fact. I think a lot of times landlords get lazy and they don't realize that an unhappy tenant is not a good thing. No. You got to make those repairs. So, yeah, back to the buying out a multifamily with 5%. Mm -hmm. You ain't just going to like just get the cash flow. It's not, I, don't, I think that concept of passive income is kind of a misnomer because it ain't passive, bro. Yeah. But you would think that would go without saying, but now that this person has brought it up. We have to say that you still have to upkeep. Mm -hmm. You still have to maintain. You are a landlord now. Mm -hmm. So there are going to be certain things. So that $500 we said as a positive might become a negative. You might mm -hmm. cut even. And that's why I said basically you're living rent free because you do have to put back to your property at times. So yeah. hopefully you do. You have to We're maintain not... your asset. You have yeah. to maintain. You, 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 you got to get your oil change in your car. <laughs> you got to cut your grass in your house. Yeah. I mean, I think DC charges like one hundred and fifty dollars a month just to just to haul your trash away. Yeah. So we're not just saying buy and sit and just collect. Like you, you become a real landlord, a responsible mm. landlord. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, also you have to consider yourself as an asset manager, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I think a lot of these types of people, like this gentleman here, uh, they have a negative view of landlords because they have probably seen landlords who are trash, who don't care about their tenants. Maybe he's paying the mortgage of somebody who doesn't fix up his the, the unit that he's renting. Um, and so he has a negative view of it. And so I get it. But, you know, there are, I mean, I know a lot of people who take care of your, you take care of your, your uh, tenants and I take care of my tenants. I don't just be out there just letting them live in trash because it is destroying my asset. And I got to mm -hmm. one day either pass it on or sell it. And, we can't do that if it's if it's dilapidated and they call it DCRA on us, you know. But you're also talk, talking about you take care of people. There's still people, right? You know I mean, like you gotta take you know take care of them. You know, it's kids living there, things like that. It's families. So. Where are your uh, where are your investment properties at, Dream? I only have one right now. Um, I have Southern Maryland. That's because I started out in a property where I lived, the right way. And then I turned it into an investment property. But I am looking into doing more as far as flipping, and that's something I've always wanted to do. So, you into flipping? No, I want to. You like you like the idea? So I of work it? with the investors, and I kind of get what they're doing at this point. But the key thing for me is just working with good partners when it comes to contractors, and that's kind of been my hold up and hesitation. The same things that, you know, average person has to deal with with finding a good contractor, we as realtors have to deal with because you it's hard out here. Mm. Definitely have to find a good contractor. Contractors, man, I've heard so many night I had a couple nightmares. I had a guy I think he was on drugs or something, man. I'm just like, bro. <laughs> so one thing I will say is make sure you get good recommendations. If you're looking for contractors, go one, they should be like active, right? So if you see a contract, be like, yo, what, what, what are you working on right now? Like, and then just go to their site and see what they're mm -hmm. doing, right? Check them out. <clears throat> Check out their response time. See if they're actually responding. Um, see if they're actually, like, tech savvy. Like, don't, you know, just writing stuff on a napkin and all that. No, they need to be tech savvy. What type of platform are you using? You know, how do you send your invoices? Those type of things. Um, and they call the people that they've done projects with. Like, yo, who, who was the last dude you did a project for? And they call that person. How were they? How responsible mm. were they? Did they leave? Did they? What, what, what about their project time? I've done two flips. I didn't like the experience, quite honestly. I don't think it's my bad, per yeah. se. I like multifamily because I can just, you know, do it. You brought up now, this is making me think of another topic for another time and maybe another person, but just the responsibility when it comes to being an investor, when it comes to being a landlord, when it comes to purchasing, mm. I don't think enough is said with that. We see so many trash flippers out here. <laughs> I'm just like tired of it. I'm sure yeah. the clients are tired of it. Um, like we just talked about just 
being landlords, like we speak of these things about real estate and make it look bright, glorious. It's such a great thing to do, which it is. But there's a lot of responsibility and sometimes people are lacking in that side. And mm. I think maybe we should bring some awareness there. That's yeah, good. that's fact. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, just jumping in, like, I think probably the best way to do it, uh, from my experience, is to partner with somebody who's who's got years in the game, right? And jump in, like, if you say, hey, Dan, I want to get into flipping because I get a lot of you. I got $10,000. I want to flip. Well, you, you, <laughs> you need a little bit more than that, right? <laughs> but what you can do is partner with somebody with experience, right? Um, and then shadow them, right? Um, you can't just shadow with no money because you got to pay to play, right? You can't just yeah. follow people around. Oh, yeah. just want to shadow you. No, put some money up, right? Jump in and jump in a deal, and take an equity position or take a debt position where you say, "All right, I'm gonna give you fifty thousand. I'm gonna give you thirty thousand. I'm gonna give you ten thousand, and you give me a fixed percent return on my money at the end. And in exchange for that, let me let me do the legwork. Let me go uh, down to the site when you need to go down to the site. Let me mm-hmm. like show me what you're doing." And then also bring value to that person. Right. Bring them a deal. <clears throat> like the best way to get into real, if you're trying to get into bring that person a deal. And then if you bring an experienced uh, investor a deal and you say, okay, for this deal also, let me let me shadow you. Like let me show me your numbers. Like let me see your spreadsheets. Like m- help me run the numbers and then send it to them and say, hey, I just ran the numbers on this. Did this even look halfway decent? Because you brought them the deal, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, your numbers is trash. Okay, bet. Like, how do I fix it? Right? So, like, those types of things done in one of my big words for 2023 and 2024 is iteration. Doing thing, the same thing multiple times. So, iteration over a long period of time consistently is, 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 is going to have compound results, right? So, if you're finding investors' deals or you're a bird dog or you're, you know, you're, um, you're doing wholesaling or whatever, you say, okay, I'm going to find an investor, build a relationship with him, take him out to coffee, whatever, and get to know this person. Then you say, all right, I want to partner with you on this deal. This is a sexy deal. I want to put 30000 in. I don't want to run it. I'll just be a partner. We'll do an equity deal. They say, okay, and I want to shadow you. I want to come to the side. I want to talk to the architect. I want to learn how to do the permits, right? And then I want to do some legwork for you. I'll keep in contact with the contractors. So put me in touch with your contract. Those types of things to integrate yourself into the process as opposed to just saying, okay, I'm going to do it then, and then going out on your own and doing it and then losing forty, fifty thousand dollars because your numbers was off. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a, a little bit of a hack. Um, I did that. I just don't like flipping, man. It's not my, it's not my bad, but it's it's profitable, man. It's, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think doing it that way, you'll be able to learn the what you should and shouldn't do, the hard ways, and some of those lessons mm-hmm. where they net nothing <laughs> after the deal's done, and some of those mistakes you can prevent. So. I like that. And that's kind of what I've been in the seat to learn with working with investors. So that's why I'm interested. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're in perfect position. What's your, uh, oh, you know what? This is the question that we all, we, we always ask all of our guests as we wrap up, um, that, well, most of our guests, most, most, of, our most guests. of them, most of them. So real estate, Valicia, the real estate dream catcher, <laughs> where do you see, where do you see real estate and the role of the real estate agent? 20 years from today. Where do I see real estate 20 years from today? And the role of the real estate agent. And the role of the real estate agent. That is a great question. I don't even know where real estate goes in a year from now. Mm. Um, wow. You, you had to do that. You had to stop me on that one. I mean, real estate's always going to be around, of course. It's just now where I'm stomped at is what it's going to look like. Um, I'm I've been focused on the now and kind of getting the the data for what it is now, but it's a good question. I I think I'm stumped a little bit for that, but the role of the real estate agent, I feel like won't change. A lot of times I see automations coming into play, but I'm still with that old school mentality that you still need that personableness of someone to actually like show you the home, the ins and outs of the home. Cause it's one thing, like I do a lot of um, showing like not necessarily me showing but i have a lot of showing partners but they can't replace me um because they're not looking the same way i may but there's Mm. technology now where a lot of people are saying it's there it's going to replace agents but Mm. i just see key factors where strong agents will remain a lot of technology is going to be coming into play 
I think that a lot of uh, showing agents will be replaced because they'll have more homes where you can just do electronic access to it. Um, so that will change. I just think that we'll still be here. Real estate will be here. But I can't definitely say, I can't build your picture of what it'll look like. It'll just be a lot of technology mm -hmm. and less probably need for us. Yeah. Tech integrated. Easier for agents that are tech savvy, that are staying up with the trends, that understand AI. Yeah, that's, no, that's a picture right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's consistent with what we've been hearing from other realtors that they, everybody, we're going to need y'all. You know, I say we as a consumer because I'm not a realtor. So, you know, there's things that I know I can negotiate a deal, but I can't do it like y'all. And, and I don't, and, and the consumer who knows less than me actually can't do it. I don't care how many YouTube videos you watch or how much you study, you know, or look, look at and, and get advice from other people. Unless you have a really good realtor, um, you're, you're at a disadvantage. It's just the same as having a, not having a, a, a lawyer in the courtroom. You know, like you, you can get a digital one. Yeah, what do you say? You can get a digital one, yeah, but it yeah. ain't the same. It it's not the same, and you're more than likely to lose. You know, lose out and not understand so many things. So, um, uh, yeah, I think your your assessment is spot on. So, thank you for. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Hit me in twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> Dreams. Felicia, the real estate dream catcher. Thank you so much for jumping on. We really Thank appreciate you. We've been trying to like, trying to like catch you, man, in between flights. Hey, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> for all y'all watching, uh, we really appreciate you for jumping on. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and share this content with anybody that you might think is dope. Hit the notifications button so that you're the first to know when we drop new content. Where can they find you at, Coach? At Morris Coach Marcus on social media, Instagram specifically, and uh, at Fields Mortgage Group. And where can they find you at Dreams? At the Real Estate Dreamcatcher, pretty much every form of social media. Awesome. And I'm Dan Wheeler Sells Homes on all platforms. Thank you guys so much for jumping on. All of us here at the Real Estate Wire Podcast. We are.